In the last tutorial, we placed a bunch of different graphics around our um, page, and it was definitely a little complicated. That is certainly something that happens with page layout. It gets complicated. Um, but uh, we had a, a good run at getting some nice graphics in here. We placed TIFF images and JPEG images and EPS images, so lots of different types of graphics that we were able to handle in that tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to finish our design by placing our pull quotes and our end symbol and then printing our document. So let's begin first by pulling out some pull quotes. And uh, if I look at the first page, what I'm looking for is some text that is really, really um, interesting that you might think that somebody would read and then want to continue reading the article. I love this. Symbols are just like breathing. We rarely consciously register them, but they are essential to our being. What a great quote. So we need to go into our layers, unlock the text, and then select that text and copy it to control C. Once you've copied it, now we can go out of that, lock our text. I'll go back to the images for right now, and I'm going to paste this and put it over to the side. Now to format it, I'm going to start off with using some text that I already have, which is um, the, the deck over here. So if I go over to my paragraph styles, I'm going to go to the cover styles and choose the deck, and then I'm going to modify from there. Now, um, the modification I want to make is, let's see, I'll go to character. I know that I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, and I'm going to make it italic. And I'm also going to center it with my paragraph settings. Now, when I make a new style, I'm going to make a new style for this, which is going to go under the body styles. And this is going to be my pullout quote. So there's where it created it. Pull quote. And I'm not going to base this on deck. I'm going to take that off. It'll still keep all the settings, but it won't change anything, which I think is really important. Click OK and you'll see that it should stay the way it was. Now, there's another thing that I want to do as well, and that is I really like the way that I formatted this other one over here um, in my deck, um, which is having a black background. Now, I need to unlock those layers. So that's the cover layer. And I notice right now that that's not going all the way down to the bottom, it should. Now, what I want to do is I love the inset here. So I'd like to use that and copy it over to my deck. And there's a couple different ways to do that. One way to do this is by making an object style first, or we can actually go over to our eyedropper tool, click on that, and you'll see that it will adopt some of those styles. Now, I wish it had adopted the um, style for the uh, padding, but it doesn't do that. If we wanted to get that as well, what I would do is go to object styles, create a new style here, and call this the deck. I'm going to click on that and apply it, and you'll see that it gets to be really similar. Now, there is one thing, though, that I definitely want to change, and that is I don't really like this particular background color. I'd like it to be different, and I also want this box to automatically be the size of this text. So I'm going to right click, go into, uh, actually, we can first go to our swatches, give it a new color, then right click, go into text frame options, go over to auto size, and turn this to auto size height only. It's one of my favorite little features. Now if you click OK, you'll see it as we reformat this text, it's going to reshape our box to fit, and I think that's awesome. Last thing that I know that we're going to need is adding a little bit of text wrap. So I'm going to do some text wrap around the outside and let's make them all the same. And I think that 0.1875 will work pretty well. And now I want to create a new object style of this. And I'm going to call this the, um, let's see, pull quote one. Yeah, that looks good. If you want to base it on deck, you can, but you don't have to. I'll just say based on none. And now I can drag this thing over and place it where I want it to be. And you'll notice now, um, of course, we can make this smaller if we need it to fit. You'll get that so it can center right in that line, which is great. And of course, you have to kind of move things up and down to make it fit with your text the way you want. If you hit the W key, then you can actually see a little bit better how that might work. And that seems to fit 
pretty well there. Now, there is one other thing that I should have thought about, and that is that I really don't want any hyphenations in here. So I'm going to go back to that character style, double click on it, and uh, maybe spell pull quote correctly. And I'm going to go over to the hyphenation settings and tell it not to hyphenate. And you should see now that text will no longer hyphenate. Beautiful. So that that looks okay. You know, you can adjust the size width or something like that. I don't love the way that it fits. I think that fits a little bit better. There we go. That's that's okay. When it comes to the exact design, that's really kind of be up to you as you uh, work with yours. Now, you can see how anytime we make one change one place, it affects other things. And that's a real problem. Welcome to working in InDesign or just in, in page layout in general. So I just have to move that until things reflow a little bit better. Now that works. All right, now the next one that we want is something about Apple. So I found uh, there was one in here that I really liked. Uh, the Apple brand suggest, uh, suggest it is nothing short of the beginning of creation itself. That's pretty good. Um, there was another one somewhere else that I found that I really liked, but it doesn't matter exactly which quote you pull out for right now. Um, so I'm going to go to the same thing. Go to my layers, unlock my text, and uh, so select that text, copy it, come outside of it, lock the layer just so I'm not editing it anymore, paste it. Now what's great is since we made those styles, we can go to our paragraph style, change it into the, um, let's see, what was that that I just did? Full quote, that should be under body styles and then go over to the object states and change that to the pull quote. And you'll see it looks very much like the other one. And that works really well. So that's why we like, really, really like those uh, pull quote styles. Now we can move this up to where we think it might fit well. Move it around. I like to nudge it with the uh, arrow keys and you'll see that that works pretty darn well. Um, looks like I've made something messed up there, so I'm going to click on the auto fit or fill frame proportionally, and that seems to fix that issue. Um, and now we, the last thing we have to do is just move things around until we can see our last little bit of text. So there's that text. Oh, I need to turn on my layers for my text again. Move that down a little bit. See if I can get this. There we go. I'm trying to get where I can see making sense. That's got to be the last text that I see. That looks like that'll work pretty well. All right. Now, going into that text, here's one of the things that can be kind of a problem. And that is that I'd really like to get to that text, but I can't get it to it because this box or this graphic is on top. You can lock that graphic, or if you double click somewhere else on your text, then you should be able to go later on. Sorry about the call there. Now, what I'd like to do right here is place a new symbol. So I'm going to go over to a panel we haven't used. It's called the Glyphs. The font that I'm looking for is called a Webding. And so I'm going to go to uh, the end of this list somewhere in here. There it is, webding or wingding, sorry. So I'm going to click on wingdings and you'll see that it comes up with all these different characters. Now all you have to do is double click on the character that you want to use. And so you can see I placed a flower before, but I'll double click on that one. And now you'll see that that has become a little symbol that's at the end. Boom, boom, boom. There you go. Now we want to create a character style for that, or actually what I want to do is also give it a color. I'm going to make it red. And now go to character styles, create a new one, and this is going to be our end symbol. And that means now I know that when I want to create another end symbol, I can. Very simple way to do it. All right, so that is almost it. Last thing that we 
need to do is we need to change this particular paragraph so it um, fits properly and maybe put a background image in here. So I'm going to go to my layers, make sure I'm in my text layer. So this is going to be in the background of this. And I'm going to create a rectangle that goes across. And it's actually going to go all the way to my bleed, which I can't see right there, but I know it's there. And now I need to move this below the current text. So you can do this over on the um, layers by dragging it to the bottom. Or if you also want to access the arrange, send forward or backward, you can do that. So if this was up on the front, I'll take it back where it was. You'll see we can arrange, send it back. And that does the same thing. Now, I definitely don't want any stroke on this, so I accidentally clicked on the wrong thing. Let's click on that stroke. Go up to our swatches. Click on none so we don't have a stroke. And I'm going to fill that with a color that I like better from my design. Oops. Go to the fill. Click on the color that you want to use. And this text right here needs to be adjusted now because it's black text, and we can't put that on a dark background. So I'm going to change that to white text by going into the paragraph styles, finding out which style I got, which is author and bio, double click on it, go to character color, and you can change the color there. Now it also changed the small version, and the reason why is because they were based upon each other. So that looks a little bit better, in my opinion. And now we are ready to save this document after you've put in your pull quotes, move around things if you need to. Um, actually, I almost, forgot one more thing that I want to do, and that's going to be important after we save. Now, I'm going to go ahead and um, I guess I'll do it right now. You can see that I have a couple URLs here. I'm going to copy this URL. And the reason I'm going to copy that URL is because I actually want to make that be an active URL. I'm going to do that by going to the window menu, interactive, and looking for hyperlinks. And I'm going to add one right there and hit um, okay, uh, let's see if that worked. Let's see, yep, oh, I guess all I had to do was paste it in and then that was it. You'll see that it says URL is not available, but that's okay. You'll see now that that text is formatted as a link as well. And that will actually be important in a little bit. Um, let me go to the other page. I know inside here I have a URL as well. There it is. There's the URL. So I'm going to select that, copy it, come up to the hyperlink and paste. I think that's all I have to do. Yep. And now that looks like it is a, um, oops, looks like I have two different URLs. There we go. Let me copy that one, paste, and then copy the other one, paste. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is because one of the um, versions of a PDF that we're going to make is going to have um, some interactivity. And so that's just something that we can do. Now that we have our final document done, let's go ahead and save it. And I'm going to go ahead and export it at the same time. So um, actually, I think I'm going to save the document and then we'll do that in the next tutorial. Thanks.